Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, we do have the usual suspects, plus some. So Bossman and I, Tate, Eric, even Scott Todd, Mimi, Zaina, we've been doing since quarantine, Facebook Lives five days a week. And so yesterday, Mimi and I were on Facebook Live and we're always getting these, the regulars and they're on and they're leaving comments. We thought, why not bring them on secretly to the Roundtable podcast? Now, unfortunately, Mimi is ill today, so she can't be on to even see what she created. But it's really cool. So we have other land geeks on the round table. But without further ado, we'll just quickly mention that the regulars are here. We've got dude buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? I am great, Mark. How are you? I'm good. Were you surprised by the, uh, the turnout on Zoom? I was. I thought I was in the wrong call. Uh, so a little, little bit of nervousness there, but it's all worked out. It's all good. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. Caught off guard, as is uh, normal practice when you come up with a new idea for the podcast, but all is well. Look, you know, we got we to change it up, man. Um, Keep me on my toes. Exactly. I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. What's up, Tate? How are you, man? Not much. Happy to be here. I'm excited about this. Uh, yeah, this is this is going to be fun. I, I feel a little unprepared. I feel like I should have, I don't know, maybe worn pants today or something instead of shorts. But uh, okay, go ahead. Let's do this. Look, that, that, yeah, look, that's how we roll. By the way, Just you know what would be great? Down. Is if we could look over Tate's shoulder. Oh, wait, you can. If you go to landgeek.com forward slash lots, he has an incredible uh, series you can learn a lot and also kind of get to know Tate. Let's look over your shoulder. Let's just go to landgeek.com forward slash lots, L-O-T-S. Look over Tate's shoulder. And last but not least, I mean, everyone here, I think for the most part, has been through flight school or is in flight school. You know him. You love him. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek, get smarter, learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. And of course, today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Go up that mountain quickly, safely, efficiently with Scott Todd leading you up that mountain of land investing. We're going to quickly just ask the land arm queen, Dawn Paresa. She's recently graduated from flight school. Dawn, how was flight school? I love flight school. Um, learned a lot. Okay, Dawn's got Hawaii From internet connection. Scott Todd. <laughs> Can you, is it hard to hear me? Yeah, you're just kind of breaking up. Sorry. But that's okay oh, because we've it's got- my, It's my connection. We've got Racine the deal machine. She can, she can help you out. Racine, Racine, you just graduated from flight school. How okay, was good. Okay, good. <laughs> Way to pass the buck. Anyway, um, yeah, no, flight school is great. Um, totally recommend it. You should totally just do it. It really helps you to do it, like get your hands dirty and actually do the business instead of just watching videos from the toolkit and trying to figure it out yourself. There you go. Scott Todd, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Are you surprised? Well, it's not that I'm surprised, but I will tell you, like, um, I know that, like, when you go off script, both Eric and I kind of, like, cringe a little bit. I hope that this doesn't turn into a let's end boot camp with a hug moment. But we'll see. There's going to be some virtual hugging going on. And I rise up. I'll cue oh. the music. Okay. Cue no, the no, music. No. So, listen, the, the introduction here has taken like five minutes already. We're running out of time. Let's go. All right. Tate, we got some questions from the other land geeks on the call. What's the first question we should, we should uh, mastermind out? So I want to talk table. first about <clears throat> Bill's question. Bill, 
don't don't list off the county, but let's talk a little bit about what you you asked us. You were you were wondering about getting a hold of people to let them know at the county uh, in regards to pricing property for bringing in utilities, right? Can you give us ask your question so the group can hear it? Okay, my question was. Um, I have a person that wants to purchase a property down there in Port Charlotte and they were just trying to get some pricing for me as far as, you know, how much is it going to cost to get water there, which that was an easy one. And then how much is it going to cost to get electricity? And that's where I was running into problems was trying to get that price because um, I called Florida power and light. They gave me a number of a planner, I guess that works in that area. Mm -hmm. I guess that's his deal. And I haven't heard back. I've left them messages for about two weeks and I'm just trying to figure out how to get this guy a, a ballpark price so we can move forward and get this deal done. All right. Uh, let's pass it over to Eric. Eric, how do you handle this situation when somebody says, Mr. Eric Peterson, I am going to build the biggest eyesore you've ever seen on this vacant land in the middle of nowhere. And I want to know how much it's going to cost to bring in utilities. How do you answer it? I say, hey, that's that's awesome. I'll tell you what. Here's the number for the planning and zoning department. Give them a call and see what you can find out. Because I don't know the answer to how much is it going to cost to bring power to this property. I can tell you that the nearest power is maybe 200 feet away or whatever that distance is if I know it. But I'm not going any further than that. Um, and the biggest reason is, you know, I'm in the business of buying and selling land. I don't want to chase down someone's research on a piece of property because the reality is everyone's plans for the property is going to be different. And if I have to go, you know, call the county because someone wants to put a chicken coop on the property or they want to put an RV there or they want to do this or that or the other thing, I'm going to spend all my time on the phone with the county instead of selling land. So. I'm going to politely put it back on the uh, buyer and let them figure that out and also let them know that, you know, if they want to reserve the property, um, get it under contract, I have a guarantee. So if it works out that, you know, they don't like the pricing of the power, they can have their money back and um, we can move on. Osman, you like it? I love it. I, love I, it I wouldn't too. have any, I don't, I don't really have anything to add to that. I think it, uh, Bill and everybody listening, one of the takeaways here is that we treat all of our buyers like big boys and big girls, and we allow them to determine if this property is right for them. Of course, if we know right away that it's not a perfect fit, we're going to steer them towards something that we believe is, but we're not out here to try to figure out if you can have a chicken coop on your land. If you want to do that, pick up the phone and call the county. Mark, is that appropriate? Absolutely. All Bill right. Dickens Thanks for the question. Yeah, yeah no we're moving in. Guys. Mark, we're going into marketing now, shifting gears, okay? We're gonna talk first and foremost um, about, I think it was Landon. Landon, what's your question on Craigslist? Yeah, so I'm, I'm in flight school right now, and my question is, what, what's typical to do with Craigslist? We've, we've hired a couple of VAs on Upwork to post ads, you know, between 40 cents and a dollar. And I'm just curious um, what the frequency you post at, how many cities you post at, what you pay, and, and what kind of leads you're getting. Is it worth it and how to do it right? All right. This is a lob for the posting domination expert himself, Scott Todd. Scott, walk us through your abbreviated Craigslist posting strategy. Okay. Well, it's basically if you imagine uh, wherever the property is go through let's say three to five hours around it right like let's say that the property's in Elko Nevada or Pershing Nevada think of three to five hours or away from that so look at look on a map look at the cities that are around there that have Craigslist cities you got Elko Nevada you got Salt Lake City I think you got Boise you got Reno you've got uh, Sacramento, Modesto, pushing the envelope. I might go to San Francisco, Oakland, the Bay Area, Upper Bay Area, right? I'm going to go out. I'm going to hit Vegas. Yes, Vegas is not three to five hours away from Pershing County. It's like seven. Why? Because it's the biggest city in Nevada. Okay, so I'm just going to think outside the box a little bit. Boom, I'm going to hit this. I'm going to identify my cities. 
Then what am I gonna do? Is I'm gonna post organically. Keyword there, organically. Don't go crazy. That's what gets people into trouble is they go try to put 100 ads in one city in one day. You're a spammer if you do that. Don't be a spammer. Then you go to Elko today. Like today, I'm gonna, I might go to Elko in Salt Lake City. Post two different ads, two headlines, two different pictures. I'm gonna put them out there. I'm gonna think of me being out there putting billboards out on the side of the road. I'm gonna put these billboards out there and I'm gonna let them be. I'm gonna write my best content. I'm gonna think about the four reasons why people buy land. And remember we talked about it in flight school, four reasons why people buy land. I'm gonna think about that. I'm gonna pick one of them. I'm gonna write the ad for that one. I'm gonna to try to bring them in to me. Then tomorrow I'm gonna to go do two other cities. Maybe it's San Francisco and then maybe it's Vegas tomorrow. And then the next day I'm gonna pick two more, maybe three cities the next day. I'm gonna write three different ads. I'm gonna change up the accounts, not the same accounts, changing up the accounts changing up my, my login information, all of that stuff. That's what we kind of cover in posing domination. Put all that stuff out there. And then every time I put up a new ad, two to three a day, I'm gonna leave it up there. The leads are gonna come in. In the beginning, they might, they might trickle in. Then, they'll, then they go through, if you imagine like my experience with Craigslist is that they start here, they go down and they come back up again. Okay, so as they get older, boom, all of a sudden they start to, to age, they start to get more leads. It's really that simple. You know what the most important thing is? Can you guess it? What do you think it is? Stay organic. Consistency, right? Okay. Be consistent. Don't expect that you're gonna just throw something out there. Now, now listen, if you're not getting leads, if you're not getting the digits, then what do you have to do? The, 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 the market is talking to you. They're telling you they don't like what you're saying. Now you, now you learn from it. You start to figure out the words that are going to get them to come back to you. But the market talks to you all the time. You just got to listen to them. I like that, Scott. I like everything you said except one thing. And that's it's Nevada. Nevada, not Nevada. Nevada, man. Nevada, man. No, 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 no. I yeah. disagree with you 100% on that. I mean, hey, being a resident here, I think I would know. And I'm telling you right away that you're wrong in your pronunciation. Hey, when, when we talk about taking down the Golden Knights, we talk about God, But uh, you remember right. when look, I was guys, at that look, gig. I'm going to have to step in here. As soon as, as, soon as, as soon as Scott starts talking hockey with Tate, this thing is going to like really go <laughs> off the rails. Let's move on, shall we? All right, fine, but this is to be continued. Aaron, you've got another related question to uh, marketing, and that's on Facebook. Talk to us, what's going on? Oh, Aaron, you're on mute. There you go. There we go. Oh, okay, yeah, um, my question on Facebook is, uh, somebody said they were gonna block me because of um, they didn't like my ads, so uh, I'm just wondering if Facebook is gonna put me in jail or? What can I expect? It, it's just one time that I've had this happen so far. So let me, let me, let's just start by doing this out of curiosity. Who here has been sent to Facebook jail? Bossman, Racine, Eric. Tate. I need to raise my feet too. If you haven't been put in Facebook jail yet, shame on you. You're not posting enough. Bingo. That's, that's exactly what I was getting at, Aaron. Don't worry about it. I mean, you're going to have people that are going to say, hey, you're misrepresenting the property and you say, I'm sorry and move on. Right. Uh, there's a book that Mark loves to re recommend. It's uh, hug your haters, right? Mark. Hug your haters is amazing. So Aaron, the way I, you don't even need to read the book. This is basically what they're going to tell you in the book. Let's say that I hate on your ad and I say, Oh, Aaron, you're a scammer. This is the worst piece of property I've ever seen. Chernobyl looks better. Okay. You're going to respond. Now you're not responding to me because I'm obviously a little crazy. You're responding to everybody else that's going to look at that comment and you're going to be reasonable and rational and say, Hey Mark, um, sorry that this property doesn't meet your needs comma. However, most people that have been out to this property really love it because of the fresh air, the lack of restrictions and the fact that you can camp out there um, anytime you want. And people really love the nearby hunting. Thanks so much for your comment. Okay, that's, that's round one. Now round two, I leave another comment. Oh, 
of course you're a hunter. You must hate Bambi, right? More hate coming your way. So now you'd respond again, very reasonable and rationally. Hey, thanks again for your comment. Um, I hope the hunting didn't offend, but will you find that most people that uh, are attracted to this property really enjoy the nearby hunting because they are hunters and find that the quail out there are plentiful and they're actually helping the environment in this particular area, right? Now the third comment, you ignore, okay? The fourth comment, the fifth comment, you've, you've, we've, you've spent two comments, but it's the advertising for everybody else where the juxtaposition of crazy to reasonable and rational really highlights the property and, and what it's good for. And then you don't need to keep, you know, making a point like Mark seems a little off, right? Everyone can see that. Love it. Very good. Yeah. I mean, don't stress it, Aaron. You're going to have people say all kinds of mean, nasty things to you on the internet. And the reality is if they want to report you, they're going to report you. You can't appeal to everybody. And, you know, we want to do the best we can to be totally transparent. And, and that's why you offer the refund that you most likely do, right? That's why you give a guarantee on every property that you sell. And if this property isn't right for them, well, tell them to move along. Go deal with Eric Peterson. He loves dealing with hard to deal with customers. That guy is patient. He's got the patience of Job. Whereas Mark, I mean, Mark's got no patient. He's got teenagers. So. I'm, I'm, like, I, I'm like progressive. So it's like, you don't want to work with me? I'll send you to Eric. Yeah. Eric gets right. all of the, uh, you know, everybody's problem you get sent to Eric. And that right. goes to everybody on this call. If you've got a troublesome customer, please send it to Eric Peterson. He would love to work with that individual. But uh, Aaron, hopefully that hel helps. Yeah. All right. Tantra, you got another question re related to Facebook, right? What's going on with you? Oh, you're on mute. There you go. Yep. Um, we have been posting every day on um, Facebook and Craigslist for the last week. Um, on Facebook, it's been Marketplace, and then we've gotten into a few buy-sell groups. And uh, we know the importance of getting the digits, but we've not gotten any leads or any bites yet. So I'm, I'm hearing that the Marketplace is probably telling us that we're not saying the right thing. Um, but I'm just wondering, um, what's the best place to be posting marketplace versus buy sell groups and versus Craigslist. Um, and is it how many, how many a day should we be posting per property that we own? All right. A lot of questions there. Bossman, take it away. You've been crushing it on Facebook recently. What's your thought yeah. on this Facebook marketplace groups? What do you, what's your opinion? Yeah. What we're doing currently is posting to Facebook marketplace. Uh, making sure we get a little bit of interaction on, on the marketplace. And then we're posting to a few groups after that, a little bit, a little bit delayed. And for whatever reason, we're getting a little bit better response on there. So getting a lot of leads on Facebook, as far as getting the digits, that's, that is important. Getting the email address is important, but what we're finding is that if you can quickly engage with that person, I think that's almost the most important thing. So I have a VA waiting in the wings and he like pounces on these people. He gets some property information. He's asking them engaging questions. Uh, if the person seems like they're interested, we're getting their email, we're getting their phone number. But, you know, they're all, it, the, the thing on Facebook is, I think the, the, the quickness of the engagement is really important because, and, and the engaging questions are important because, do you know how many people we've sold properties to on Facebook without ever talking to them on the phone? And sometimes we don't even get their email address till the end of the conversation because we'll ask for the email address. They're a little bit timid for whatever reason. Then we have continued to have the conversation with them about the property and we, they don't get the email address until the end of the conversation when we're drawing up the contracts and that type of thing. So it's all about engagement. Uh, you can use the, the audio tool on Facebook to create engagement. You can use the video tool on Facebook to create engagement. Uh, and that's currently what's working uh, well for us. So. Hopefully that helps, but you know, hopefully there's a hook to get them engaged, uh, whether it's a property report, a conversation, a video of yourself, a video of you describing the property, something like that. I love it. Don and Racine are 
flight school graduates, you guys have been slaying it on Facebook. Anything you would add to Scott Bossman's response here as far as Facebook tips, Facebook etiquette, what's working, what's not working for you guys? What, what's on, what are you, what are you guys getting? How are you getting your success? I know Mark's already interviewed you both thoroughly on this one, trying to squeeze all knowledge out of you, but uh, what's working for you guys? Um, so I've been posting randomly to Facebook. I really should do it more consistently, but I haven't. So <laughs> that's on me, but um, yeah, I usually just, post to marketplace once in a while I'll do groups um, I don't see as much interest I guess from groups as I do from marketplace and then I also was changing around the city so if I wasn't getting any inquiries or you know hits or whatever I would move it to somewhere else instead of creating a new ad but then now I'm thinking maybe I should create a new ad I don't know but that's what I've been doing and then I've also been um, advertising on Craigslist uh, and that's been successful in getting email addresses um, and a couple, I guess, bites, but not, it hasn't, you know, converted to sales yet. So. Well, it'll happen. Take some time. Don, let's talk about frequency. How often are you posting on Facebook for a property or marketing a property on Facebook? Hopefully. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, I post one out a day in a different city, but I don't post the same uh, property. Like I just, I really, I rotate them all. So one out a day and I. We lost I've been her. I think that's the one that I have probably the most, um, you lost me. I have You're back the, now. The, the, I only have like the meanest clients from the buy and sell groups. I don't pay them attention, but they're the ones that, I think she said she gets the meanest comments from the buy sell groups too. Yeah, that's, that's all right. Yeah. So, um, so hopefully that answers your question um, about frequency. I would say, you know, the thing with Facebook and Craigslist and all of these platforms that we use for our marketing is nobody is a hundred percent certain what what the maximum amount of uh, ads you're allowed to post on a daily basis is. And so what you want to do is you're going to have to do some uh, private investigating, right? You're going to have to post, 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 and eventually you're going to cross that line. And you're going to get a slap on the wrist. And when that happens, you're going to spend, you're going to do your time, right? You did the crime, time to do the time to pay in time. And so you're going to have to go to jail. You're going to spend a week or 10 days there, and then you're going to learn from it. And while you're in jail, you're going to review what you did and how many times you posted and you're going to learn from it and then you're going to scale it back and i always tell people when it comes to marketing don't be timid right we're out here to make money and the only way you're going to make a lot of money in the land business is if you communicate and, and share these amazing deals that we all have with the public they want to know about it and unfortunately I don't have a billboard. So the only way for me to get in touch with these people is Craigslist and Facebook and uh, Land Moto. So you got to be proactive, really, really proactive. And if you get slapped on the wrist, welcome to the club. Don't worry about it. Start small and slowly scale your way up. Scott, am I missing anything there? Scott, no, I, it goes back to organic, right? Like if you go in there and you try to slam in 50 ads in one day, well, then you're not organic. You're a spammer. Don't be a spammer. Think about Bob down the street trying to sell his lawnmower. He's very mm -hmm. diligent in his approach, right? He's like, okay, I'm going to post here and I'm going to post here. And then, you know, then he's posting two ads a day, four ads a day. Now, at some point you will reach your limit. Okay. And that's where you end up in Facebook jail. But the thing is, you see, the thing is, is it's not about how many ads that you're hitting. It's about one word only. I asked Landon what it was. It's consistency, right? It's being consistent. Show up every day, post ads, listen to the marketplace. You're not getting responses. Why? Why are you not getting responses? Do they just not like you? That's it. They don't even know you. Okay. You got to find your words. You got to find your voice. Go become a student of other ads. It's the best way to do it. That's the only way to do it. Yeah, I mean, I think the mentality, and I, I talk about this at boot camp, is, you know, have that Geico mentality. So Jen Ramquist, 15 minutes will save you. 
15. I don't remember. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Keep putting me on the her? spots. <laughs> I know. Paul, Paul Bilotti, 15 minutes, Will. 15% or more. 15%. 15% or more on your car insurance. Now, why do we all know this? It's drilled in. Because it's drilled in. What is Geico? They are nothing but consistent, what Scott was saying. Now, we don't need to have a billion-dollar marketing budget, but every time you see a Geico commercial, or a Coca-Cola commercial, or a McDonald's commercial, or an Apple computer, uh, Apple commercial, post an ad. Now, if, if, you, if you're, you can't do it on Facebook, go to Landmoto, post an ad. If you're not on Landmoto, go to Craigslist, post an ad. But that should be your mentality, is I can operate consistently and aggressively and not be timid in the marketplace without a billion dollar budget. Does that help? I love it. I want to talk about one thing that Scott said, and it, it's kind of funny because I remember when Scott's program, Posting Domination, came out. Uh, I, Scott, I remember talking to you and you said, all right, Tate, you're going to get excited. You're going to learn how to do this and you're going to learn how to just post like crazy. And he warned me, and he's like, this is like the one ring to rule them all. You're going to put this on and you're going to feel invis invincible. And Sure enough, I disregarded what Scott said and I went nuts and I just posted as many ads as I could. And I thought the way to win at marketing is to carpet bomb the entire United States with my ads. Just post as many ads as I could possibly get out in a day and do that day in, day out, day in, day out. And I would generate more leads than anyone else. And, and since then, I've learned as a marketer, I've learned as a land investor, and I've realized that it's not about quantity. It's about quality. And so I was wondering, Scott, if you could tell us a little bit about why quality is more important than quantity of ads. Well, see, the, th the thing is, like, I mean, what, what you'll find also a lot of times, Tate, is the fact that pe people, they want to they talk about how many ads are put out there. I post 100 ads a day. I was talking to a guy the other day. He told me, like, oh, I'm a land investor. And I post over 100 ads a day on Craigslist. And I'm like, well, how many leads are you getting? He's like, uh, I'm like, to tell me you're getting hundreds of leads a day. He's like, no. You see, his ads are the, the visible ads. And what I mean by that is he's not getting a one-to-one -one return on his time or, or, his, or his investments, right? Each ad is an investment. So if you're posting, you know, like my goal on, on Craigslist was always, can I get one or two leads per, per ad per day? So if I posted 20 ads today, could I get 20 leads today? Like it's, it, and if you keep building it, we'll get there or more. Do you see, some ads, you find the market, you post an ad out there, next thing you know, you got 10 leads. Well, that's a multiplier ad, right? Like it's leverage because you post an ad and you got 10 leads. But how many people out there trying to post ads? One of the biggest mistakes I see of people posting ads is guess what? They go after the small little cities. It's like, hey, why, why are you posting in uh, like, I don't know, pick a pot on Craig. I'll pick on Elko again. Elko, okay? Like, yeah, they have a Craigslist. Who looks at it? You, you're the only one that looks at it. Like everything, everything in this world is driven by an 80, 20 principle. You learned about this a long time ago. 80% of your leads are going to come from 20% of your ads, right? So if that's the case, the same thing applies to the Craigslist cities. And I, I have proof in posting domination, 80% of the Craigslist traffic comes from 20% of the cities. Why are you messing around with Elko when you can go to Salt Lake city, Vegas, Nevada, Vegas and uh, to like San Francisco, those cities get way more traffic. It's eyes on your properties. And then you, now you're working smart. You don't have to come up with a hundred ads every day. Why? Because you're getting enough leads. You see what you got to do is you got to figure out how to become a lead building machine. That's what you got to do. I love it. Yeah. I mean, just, yeah, well, just to, uh, you know, put the exclamation point on that 2080 rule. Tate, would you agree that 20% of my jokes about Eric Peterson yield 80% of the laughs? Yeah, I mean, we're still talking about Jot Not Pro and that was from 2014, right? So that was a, that was a zinger. The other ones, I don't really remember them, but uh, yeah. See, exactly. I, I, would, I would echo what Scott said. I mean, it, it all comes down to consistency, right? You gotta show up every single day. and. 
Eric Peterson, what's your number one question to get somebody to engage with you? Like if, if you get a Facebook lead, first of all, they're gonna say, is this available? You're gonna say, yes, it is. Would you like, what's your question that you ask them to get this person to communicate with you, to keep the conversation alive? We like to get them talking about what they wanna do with the property. Um, all right, so, so role play with me. Is this a still available? Yeah, the property's still available. What, what kind of plans do you have for the property you intend to buy? Chicken farming. Chicken farming. That's mm -hmm. cool. Lots of um, eggs, I like eggs. So you're gonna, are you going to live on this property with your chickens? Nah, no, no, no. There'll be too many chicken. birds. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so are you familiar with the zoning in this county? Nope. Oh, you're not. Okay. Um, this particular property is zoned AR, which means agricultural residential. Um, I think you could probably have your chickens there. However, I'm not sure if there's a limit on how many chickens you can have. So I'm going to uh, text you this phone number for the planning and zoning department. You can reach out to them and see if you can have all those chickens. All right. And, and just like that, see, see what Eric did well there was he got the conversation going, whether it's about chickens, whether it's about somebody building their dream home or hunting, you know, the goal is to get that person to think about how this land is going to benefit them. And once you can shift the tables and make them realize you've got something that they really, really need in their life, it becomes very easy to get them to open up. Right. And once they start talking about themselves, all Eric needs to do is provide good communication with them, make making that monthly payment easy and irresistible, and he's gonna have fantastic success. So uh, what do you wanna do with the land? Uh, I'd be curious to know, Scott Bossman, what's your number one question too that you, get, you ask people? No, that's, uh, that, that's right along the lines of what we ask people. Uh, so what type of property are you looking for? That type mm -hmm. of thing. Um, and if they tell us, hey, I just wanna camp, Okay, this property is great for that. You know what? This property isn't the best for that, but here I have three other ones that are amazing or right, you know, that type of thing. So uh, what do you plan to do with the property? Why is, why is owning land important to you? Why, why are you wanting to do this right now? And you'd be surprised what people say. They come out and say, you know what? I'm sick. I, I want to invest in something that, that's going to grow in value over time. Oh, you know, so instead of the stock market, like you want a hard asset, right? That, that you're going to be able to sit on over time and gain value. Yeah. And I want to pass on to my kids. You know what? Any one of my properties would work for you. Let me steer you to this great one. So it's just about, it's about engaging, it's about having a conversation, showing that you are there to help solve whatever problem they have, right? Or whatever, whatever thing they want to accomplish. When somebody says, I want to leave it for my kids, the correct answer is how many kids do you have? And what yes, about your grandkids? Exactly. <laughs> right? Because I think they want a hard asset right. too. And you're going to be the guy who's going to fill that, uh, that wish list. So I love it. Exactly. Uh, hey, before you move on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's pick some, let's pick someone from flight school. Let's pick Jen or Aaron. You pick, I'll let you pick Jen or Aaron, which one you want to pick or Jen. anybody else. I don't care. Anybody else pick on, pick on Landon, Tancha, pick on. Well, we haven't heard from Paul. We haven't heard from Paul. Okay. Let's Paul see school. there. Uh, wait, I'm not sure. Paul. Uh... Okay. All right. All right. All right. I say we go with Jen. I'm going to stick with my guts here. I, I knew I got faith in Jen. Okay. Jen, what, what's the one thing I teach you in flight school to lead off with when people are responding back to you? Get the digits. Okay. Get the digits. But then once you get the digits and you start talking to them, what do you have to do? Ask questions to make that sure you're getting there. Okay, now we're going down the right road. What's the number one question I like to ask? What do you plan on using the property for? Why are you looking for land? Why are you looking for land? Mm -hmm. Right? It's the same thing. Like if you listen to Eric or Scott Boston, we're all saying the same thing. Eric's saying it in his own way. You know, I'm saying it my way. Like that's the thing. It's like we get the digits, but but we Sometimes people want to jump to the digits, right? So like someone says, hey, I'm interested. Great. What's the digits? Now, for those of you in flight school, you don't even know what I'm talking about for digits, but it's a different story. <laughs> like, they're like, what's the, what, what? Okay, give it to me. 
Well, you're jumping the gun, right? Like people that want to jump to that piece, you know, I always joke, they're like a Navy sailor getting off the, the ship after six months at sea, right? Calm down, calm down, you'll get the digits. But if they say like, hey, what is, what is the, like, hey, interested. Okay, cool. Think about how you can apply what Eric said or what Scott said is like, now you start to ask the questions. Now you start to ask questions. Now you get to know each other. Now you get the digits. And then the next thing you know, you're on a date with somebody. Love it. I absolutely love it. It's a, it's a process, right? And, and the person who goes through the, for the jugular right away is going to scare off people. You don't want to come off as a desperate land seller, right? We want, uh, people want to work with people who have uh, confidence, especially confidence on the sales side of business. Right, Mark? Absolutely. And, you know, speaking of confidence, it's now time for the tip of the week. And since Mimi is not here, she has very, uh, you know, graciously passed the baton off to none other than the technician. I'm just, Eric I just want to know, Mark, how come you gave Eric a heads up that he was going to have to do with a tip and you didn't give me a heads up that I was going to have to ask all the questions today? Is there I mean, a favoritism going on I, I, here? I really think that's like, like a Zen cone. Oh. And there's just no answer for it. Mm. But it, it's going to help you get to a, a more present state. I see. All right. Well, I appreciate it. So Eric, what is your tip of the week? A website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? So today I just put a link in the chat. Um, it is to the zapier.com blog and there's an article on Gmail filters that's available there. Um, if you're not familiar with Gmail filters, um, you can do a lot of different things with them in combination with Zapier. Um, so it's a, it's a great resource to start learning about those filters if you're not familiar with them. Ooh, I use Gmail filters all the time, but Eric, they haven't been working lately. So let's say that I get a promotion. I'll go in and I'll do a filter saying archive this message. So it skips the inbox and then I'll put it in the label promotions and then I'll apply the filter and this says apply the filter. Next thing you know, a week later, it's hitting my inbox. What gives? I don't know. Are you, uh, are you saving those filters? Do you go back and look at them to make sure that everything's still matching in terms of the email address you're watching for and, and that kind of stuff? Oh, uh, no. Yeah. So, all your Gmail filters are under your settings. If you uh, go into settings, I think it's like the fourth tab over or something. Um, once you're in settings is filters. And you can see in there all the filters you've created and you can go edit them. So if um, you know I was sending you emails from one address and I changed it next week to a different address and you wanted to continue to filter, you could go update or add um, both of those addresses into that filter. Yeah, you know what I've been thinking of doing is getting really um, just radical with my Gmail and just having a VA go in and check my Gmail twice a day and then forward to another Gmail, the ones that are most pertinent. What do you think of that? You don't do that already? That really hurts, Scott Todd. You know I've got my dopamine addict and I need to check my emails. Like, did I get a good one? I mean, did I get a come sale? On. Come on, man. Like, is that what you're doing? I hate going. Yeah, why would I go into email? Do you know what happens when you go into email, man? What happens is you go into email and then like you get an email that says, um, hey, from Facebook, you've been tagged in a message. Like you go in there because you want to send me a message, right? You go in there, you see the email says, hey, you've been tagged in a message. You're like, oh my gosh, I've been tagged in a message. So Facebook just captured your attention. Boom, captured. You're gone, bye. And then next thing you know, you're scrolling down, you're watching videos, you're watching, you're watching the, uh, the Facebook Live the other night, the, the, um, the nightcap, <laughs> like, yeah. when, when Scott Bossman baited Zeno. You're watching that whole thing, you're reliving the whole moment. 
Next thing you know, two hours goes by, you're like, ah, oh, I gotta send Scott an email. You go back over there, but guess what? Amazon's having a sale. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I was looking at that, it's on sale. Next thing you know, you're scrolling through Amazon, you're loading up your shopping cart. You're like, I gotta send Scott the email. You go back over there, but guess what? Nordstrom's, Nordstrom's is calling baby. Next thing you know, four hours later, I still don't have my email because you got sidetracked. That's the way that it works. This is the scariest window into your life. See, that's right. Your life, I'm, not mine. I, I'm frightened. Your life. Yeah. My life my, would be the that's calling me back. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. Right. Your, your your life is like, do I go on the boat or the plane today? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I thought this was a great round table. So much fun. Thanks everybody for joining us. We really appreciate it. Um, thank you to Eric and uh, the nightcap OG dude, buddy, Scott Bossman, the technician. And the, I love it when you call me big Papa Tate Litchfield and the brain depressor, Scott Todd for, you know, being so uh, cool with me about the surprise with all of you joining. So thank you to all of you for taking time to join us for the special roundtable podcast, which I now get to upload as a live Facebook live so people can get the roundtable a little early if they want and, and check it out. So I'm going to unmute everybody. We're going to do this together and see how it goes. Is everybody ready? Mm -hmm. But before yep. we do that, I just want to thank the listeners for putting up with our shenanigans. Remind them the only way that Eric Peterson's ever going to come back on this round table is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money, 30 days or less. All right, let's do this. One, two, three. Let's Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. And of course, wash your hands. Wash, wash your hands. hands. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. So that was a kind of fun surprise, huh? What do you, what do you think, Tate? Oh, should we, do, a lot should of we try fun. to do that again? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was really good. It was. It's always fun to talk with uh, a. a you know, a new land investor or somebody who's just getting started on the journey and uh, be able to answer their questions in real time. I love it. It's, it's, it's enjoyable. You know who jumped on but couldn't stay? It was Horse Pock from, I think, the Netherlands. That was kind of cool. Oh, we He's are like officially Austria. trending in Europe. Is that what you're saying? We're, we're trending in Europe. He was probably like, is it nightcap yet? <laughs> <laughs> it was no. for him. Yeah. So Scott, when is nightcap? Is it tomorrow or Thursday? Uh, nightcap is t tomorrow night at uh, 10 Eastern, 10 PM Eastern. Okay. And, so uh, here's, hope. here's the question. If you could only have one drink for nightcap, what would it be? Like this is uh, it. Like, for the rest of your life, this is your nightcap drink. Ooh, the rest of my life. That's, that's rough. Uh, probably, probably Blanton's. What is it? Blanton's bourbon. How do you, Blant, how do you spell it? Uh, it's B-L-A-N-T-O-N apostrophe S. Right, Eric? Got that yes. spelling right, didn't I? What's yes. so special about Blanton's bourbon? I don't know. It's one of my favorites. I, I enjoy it. It's high end, right, Eric? Maybe not as high end as Eric drinks, but. Eric, is it is it good? Is it is it like that razor that Scott Todd likes? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it is good. There's a lot of hype around it, so it's hard to get. Um, but but it is good. Here's Scott. Is it is it the the, the two blade <laughs> bourbon? That is the greatest razor. Listen, just let's let's just read. <laughs> Here we go. No one knows what we're even talking about, but Mark loves this one razor. Mike Zano and I, and even Tate, love this other razor. And guess what? Mark, today I, I like put on my shaving cream and I took your razor. I'm like, let me give it another try. And I'm like doing it and it's like pulling my hair and it's got a new blade in it. And I'm like, this is the you're, biggest. 
You're probably not putting the blade in correctly. You're I probably they're the blade the blade as you put it in. No, I've got it in there. I've confirmed it. It it's like tugging my skin. I'm like, this is ridiculous. I put it down. I picked up the greatest razor ever made, and I started shaving. I'm like, oh man, beautiful skin. Just saying. All right, I'm gonna order one now. You do it. You do it. I'm gonna order one. You a two. Bossman? Of course. He wants the best. The best isn't always driven by price. Okay. See how this rolls? All right. Just just a quick show of hands. Mac people. Should quick show of hands. Mac people. <laughs> oh my gosh. Bill, okay. Nice. It's good. Any PC people left? One, Slept. two, yeah, surface. Yeah, surface people. Four. Surface. Okay. You're not the same, baby. It is the same. It is <laughs> not the same. You know what's funny is my daughter comes to me and she's like, Dad, every time I go to search, it doesn't go to Google, it goes to Yahoo. And I'm like, okay, honey. So then what am I doing yesterday? I'm removing uh, malware from her from her Mac so that she that can never get to happens. What? Listen, really? I, I swear it happened yesterday. And I can send you the, I even bookmarked the link to do the draw, the, the bomb drop on you guys. And you're like, oh, my Mac's not working. I'd be like, well, maybe you have a, a virus and malware. Yeah, really. It was deep too. I, I have no words. I, yeah. I, yeah. I, you know. Rock solid system. <laughs> like Mark, everybody here is like, can we just drop off now? Look at them. You know what everybody should be doing? They're ready. Like, like Tosh is like, I gotta, I gotta post some ads. She's like, enough, <laughs> enough with your shenanigans. Okay. <laughs> I'm posting, I'm making some money. I'm building my passive income. I don't know what you yahoos are doing. Right. And, and then, then some of them have to deal with me tonight already. They're like, again, Double so you, gotta, dose. you gotta let them go. Hey, can we watch those while you're doing um, light school? Can we do it again? And do what again? Light school again? I do it every week. Oh, you mean like as a, as a flight school grad, you want to go back on? Well, you just yeah. watch your videos over just watch your and videos. over and over yeah. again. Yeah, but it's different. You know, we, a lot. Have, we do have a new tool. Like I can, I can whisper this now because this is really good. We do have a new tool that everyone that went through flight school, I don't know what, the last year mark? I don't yeah. know, like. Wait, Scott, share your screen and show it. It's so cool. Oh, listen, uh, yeah, I wish you would give me advance notice, but oh, they, hold, on, hold on, I'll get there, I'll get there. <laughs> Eric's like, I love when, when Mark puts Scott on the, on the, on the spot. <laughs> just, I expect it, it's not that I love it, you just do it to everybody. Yeah, I, you know what? This is, this is not relationship enhancing. I really need to work on this. Uh, let's see. I think this is it. Let me try it. Um, it. It is. It is. I got it. Okay, hold on. Here it comes. Uh, look at this. This is, this is my flight school team tonight. They're getting access to this tonight. Uh, but look at, look at what we're doing for, for our flight school students or coaching students is we are putting in there the the best knowledge base uh, system for for land investing, right? So all the questions that you have, like, and even for my flight school that just graduated, you guys are gonna get it too. But basically you can come in here and like, this is sorting by most popular. So we, we let in a flight school last week. This is what they're seeing as the most popular. You can come in here. You can actually go by category. So you can look at the stuff that deals with the county, the list, the, the mailing. Due diligence, mailing, uh, marketing, and sales, building a VA team, for example. So we're still populating this. We're still loading this. So this is always growing, and it will continue to grow as, as questions continue to grow. But things like, hey, do I need a 1099 my VAs? And, you know, like, uh, are there any roles that you don't outsource? And so you come down here, and there's either context, like a video, or there's uh, an actual response. So like there's one, like here's, here's one. This actually applied to today's question mark. Um, someone, they asked like, well, how many ads per day, right? You, you heard that question. Well, 
like how many ads per property should Craigslist poster be posting each day? Well, here's Tate's response to that question. So this is a growing knowledge base. Flight school students will have access to, uh, coaching students have access to it. It's pretty strong. It's Kaizen, continual improvement. Hey, I, I love it. You wanna see something else? Yeah. You're gonna get it, don't worry, don't worry. Everyone on this call is gonna get it except for the, the deal machine Racine. I mean, hey, look, <laughs> look, at that. look at the reaction. Of course Racine, you're getting it. Mark, I do, ha I do have to share something else with you too, if I can. This is, this is a big deal. Yeah. This is a really big deal. And uh, this is actually live right now. Okay, so if everybody goes into LG Pass right now, uh, let me let me log out of this one. Let me go to a um, a test account here. Hold on a second. <laughs> By the way, Scott, I'm using one password now. I'm loving it. Yeah, you like it better than LastPass? I just like the UI more. I, I mean, I don't know if I like it. I don't know. So check out check yeah. check this out, everybody. A couple things. One, we were asked last week, where's my uh, fave icon. Well, it's there. Okay. It was there. I don't know what happened to the coding, but it's always been there. But look at this mark. This is, this is like re just released this morning at 12 o'clock in the morning. And it's really cool. So here we go. One of the things that the way that it used to work is when you wanted to remail to your offer to your list, you actually had to come down here and export the data. And when you export the data, then you would, um, clean up the data, you would re-upload the ones that you wanted to mail, and boom, they would go back out again, right? Well, that's all changed because now there's a remailing function. You'll see it's right here, it says remailing. And if I come down here and I load this, it's gonna, um, what it's gonna do is it's gonna search all of my mail. So what you'll see here is that it's searching for all of my mailings, and you'll see like I've done some test mailing to here, and it's showing me the date, and it's also showing me the county and the state. So if I mail to multiple counties and states in a given day, well, then it will break that out for me. And what's really cool is I can come over here, and like you'll see like this says, Costilla 1, for example, was done on May 10th. Well, if I click on this, well, then what it's going to do is it's going to take me to the, to the, um, the view mailings like this and you'll see the one shows up right so like if it said 100 it would show up and i could dig into it and look at it so this is just taking me to that view mailings for that particular uh property so here i am i i got this now let's just say that i wanted to mail something from 100 days ago so this is uh march i'm sorry may let me go back 100 days let's let's look at something like in february maybe i want to mail to to this one elko nevada I mailed 36 that day. And again, you just saw that I could click on this and see what they were. But this has also given me some new information, such as how many people responded. You'll see I got zero responses from this fake mailing. It will show me my response rate. So like up here, I got I'm, I mailed two, I got one response. My response rate is 50%. I have two accepted offers. So that's 100%. How would I get that? Well, maybe they had multiple properties I bought off of that. You know, like, so I'm, I'm getting, um, my real, uh, or my real uh, accepted offer rate. So I can look at this and go, well, I mean, I got zero responses. Well, maybe my pricing is wrong. So I can come over here and hit this little resend button and it's asking me, hey, how do you want to remail these things? Do you want to leave the price as it is? And look, if I put this as 0%, the pricing remains the same. It will remail exactly what it went out last time. But I could change this. I could change it by the percentage basis. Oh, let me go up 10% or let me go down 10%. Or I can do it by a fixed amount. So I can go up $100, down $100, up 50, down 50, whatever I wanna do, I have the, the ability and flexibility to, to make that change right there. And then it's saying, hey, do you wanna include in your mailings offers that responded that you didn't buy, meaning, why did they respond to you? Well, they responded to you maybe because they were interested, but you didn't buy it. Why didn't you buy it? Well, maybe they didn't accept your offer because that's the thing is it's not, it wasn't an accepted offer. So you can choose that or not to choose it. Now, what we're not going to mail to is we're not going to mail to your do not mails. So if somebody 
came back and said, don't mail me again, or you got a return to sender and you marked it as do not mail, we won't mail to those. Those won't be in our queue. So all I have to do is come over here and hit remail. And when I do that, it's going to start the, the, um, the batching and it will take it and put it into my normal batching. Now I have the drip program in place. So I have set in here, I think I have 20 per day to mail. Well, it's going to mail 20 immediately. And then tomorrow it will put it back into my queue. So if I already had a queue of 50 in there and I'm mailing 20 a day, well, in two and a half days, these will start to go out, right? Because it works the queue system first. It just adds them to the queue. And that's, that's really one of the cool things about it. But I can also come over here and look at my remailing status. So when I'm doing this, I can, um, again, pull up the status here. And this is showing me the status of what's happening to them. So maybe wow. I didn't have, maybe I don't have, maybe I have zero put in there. It's like, yeah, see, I have zero. That means all of them will go out. That's why it's not put into the queue. So all of a sudden it mails out all of my accepted or all of my offers. I just remailed like that. And again, if I had the drip system set up and I was mailing 20, 40 a day, whatever it is, it would just queue them up and keep the system going. If, you're, then, not, if you're not using LG Pass right now, I have no idea what you're doing, but go to landgeek.com forward slash resources, play with it for free for a month. See if you, if you don't love it, you're not out anything, but I guarantee with these new improvements, Scott Todd, I know it's going to make you uncomfortable, but I love you, man. Bring it in. That was amazing. Virtual. Okay. Time. Since it's virtual, you know, at least you're not playing the song and going person to person. It's all good. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. We better end it before you do. All right. Thanks everybody. That was amazing.